also I got some depressing news today. Brian Jakes, author of Redwall and Moss Flower, and the entire Redwall series, died on February the 5th, 2011. And it came as a surprise to a lot of longtime readers. And Brian Jakes was a author that I actually got to meet at a pretty young age. I, I say young, but I got to meet him when I was old enough to actually remember him reading at a Borders. And the chapter that he chose to read was, uh, I believe it was chapter two of Redwall. Gloom was coming. And I just, and that, that's always stuck with me. Time and time again, and it's been unforgettable. Over all these years, that's what I remember. And I'm, I'm currently looking through, through my old art folders to see if I have anything from, from this one project that I did for school. I only took one art class in college, and my, my paper cuttings probably do betray that more than I wish. <laughs> The art class was about creative thinking and creative art. And even though I always liked to think that I was full of interesting things, I was not classically trained. And I did not practice nearly as much as my brother. So, instead of a real portfolio, all I have are sketches graphics and amateur drawings. And I don't even know if I have what I'm looking for. So, for the art class, for the art class, what he had us do is he wanted us to do a book cover for our favorite book. And I struggled. I struggled for about three weeks trying to figure out which book I wanted to do. Because there were so many, so many in my collection. And at the time, I had two favorite authors. I had Ray Bradbury and I had Brian Jakes. Those were my two favorites. And as fond as I was of Bradbury, Jake's won out. Because, and if you haven't read his series, I do suggest it. If you, I want to say if you enjoyed Harry Potter for the characters, You'll love Brian Jakes for his, and his description, which outstrips Rowling. I'm sorry, Rowling. I'm sorry, fans of Rowling, but it, his description seriously completely outstrips Rowling. His characterizations, his... When it, whenever a character carries a heavy accent, you don't have to imagine the accent. He writes it for you. And then you imagine it. It's not something that you that you fake pluck out of the air. It's there in the book. If somebody's talking to you in a Cockney accent, you read it. <laughs> and if you read it out loud, you can pretty much fake it with general conviction. If they're speaking with a Scottish accent, it's there too. Hmm. None of these are what I'm looking for. It is kind of fun, though. None of these at all are what I'm looking for. What is what I'm looking for? I hear the cover I did for Beauty and the Beast. 
any generic beauty and the beast story. Sleeping beauty is kind of boring. But uh I did Alice in Wonderland. And Snow White. Oh, that turned out a whole lot better than I remember. And if my camera is as bad as I remember it to be, you probably can't see any of that. But now I've got to try to find it. Hang on just a minute for me. Are you? Yes? Yes? Oh my god, yes! Okay, so the regular book that I had chosen was the one that my aunt had given to me. And it was The Outcast of Redwall. Now, <laughs> being, like I said, an untrained drawer and my brother confirmed this multiple times, I really needed to take a course in anatomy. So covers like this didn't exactly fly in the classroom. Or this. Or this. <laughs> And although I was fond of those covers and even drew a couple of them twice, they certainly fell out of favor. This one almost turned out. It was a cellophane sheet. But the cellophane clearly uh, <laughs> did not make the transition. This is a photocopy. You can't see it, but we have one of the characters, which is a mouse, and the other one, which is a ferret. No, the one that my teacher liked the best, the one that I stuck with, is this one. Rest in peace, Brian Jakes. You said my book was well loved when you signed it. Your books will live on. You left behind a legacy. Have a great week.